The 2014 Festival of the Musical Society of Nigeria, Muzon, tagged Coming of Age, marks the 18th edition of celebrating the festival. We're brainstorming on the festival committee and it occurred to us this is the 18th year of the festival. Um, and the idea of uh, borrowing from human convention came up. Um, at 18, um, an adolescent is said to come of age, to become an adult, to take on legal responsibilities and things. So we thought, um, was a good idea. Um, but beyond staging the 18th um, uh, festival, we looked around and in our core areas of activities, we thought we could indeed claim to come of age. We're sitting in this um, iconic center, uh, which was built 20 years ago. Um, as a way of providing a suitable venue for artistic uh, performances. The festival itself uh, started, I believe, in 1996. Um, yes, since this is the 18th. As a way of proclaiming Muson's interest beyond just the narrow area of classical music. We wanted to show the um, commonality of the arts, that if you enjoy good music, good classical music, you're also likely to enjoy literary works, to enjoy visual arts, if you enjoy classical music, you're likely to enjoy jazz music. Ordinarily, jazz is not a common feature in our everyday uh, music and music. So it's really bringing all kinds of arts together so that everybody, I mean, will find a test, find something he likes. You will be a person who loves drama. There will be drama for you. If you like jazz, there's jazz for you. If you like classical music, there's classical music. So it's bringing all the arts together for people to find their test. This year's festival, a convergence of music and dramatic performances, began with My Kind of Music and followed by the extravagant story of the streetwise legend of the early 1960s, Jaguanana, a musical adaptation of Cyprian Quincy's novel directed by Wole Oguntu. Jaguanana is about a young girl who left the East uh, in search of a better life in Lagos. She left her home, she left her husband, and uh, well, she came here in search of, it was, it was a hustle. And uh, she had a club she frequented, and she, in the beginning she was taken care of by a white man, and then she herself began to take care of herself, and she met men. She met many men. But it's also the story of the changing faces of Lagos. It dwells on entertainment, it dwells on politics, it dwells on the beauty of the life in Lagos, it dwells on the horrors of the life in Lagos. So it's all encompassing, it's a beautiful play.
Oguntokun's success in the stage adaptation of Super Lequency's classic shows the endearing creative power of African dramatists. Visual Arts Society of Nigeria, in collaboration with the Musical Society, also had their day at the 2014 festival with beautiful paintings displayed for public viewing. When the thing was, was given to me, I thought, how best can I, can I represent coming of age? And I looked at um, the history of contemporary art in Nigeria. Um, um, the earliest contemporary artist of note is Aino Onabolu. And Aino Onabolu, um, he, he lived in the early 20th century and he's the first person we know of who started painting and selling his works. So we regard him as the number one, we regard him as the number one visual, um, contemporary visual artist in Nigeria. And um, with, we, I looked at it and I said, okay, how do we connect this to coming of age? And um, I thought, well, that maybe let us look at the legacies which Aino Anabolu left, because Aino Anabolu was instrumental to the introduction of art in Nigerian schools. Well, it's nice to see a resuscitation of the visual art content of Muslim Festival. It came once upon a time and then it seemed to have cooled off and then it's back and it's great. Uh, there cannot be an art festival, I think, without you know, a visual art. And we must thank the management of Muslim for bringing back, you know, the phrase bringing back these days is pregnant with all sorts. <laughs> bringing back uh, visual art um, and what I see today is quite exciting uh, there's some vibrancy of color of objects and uh, it will be challenging for the future to see even better works of art Classical Music Concert was a platform to see the musical ingenuity of Tunde Jagede, a composer, multi-instrumentalist and musician per excellence, who has since taken over from Thomas Kanitz as the new artistic director of the Musical Society of Nigeria, Muzon. Born in 1972 to a Nigerian father from Ekiti State and an Irish mother, Degede had his education at the Guild Hall School of Music and Drama and Porcel School of Music. I've had quite a lot of experience in terms of different cultural settings for my music because I, as well as the cello and Western classical music, I also studied the kora, which is the West African harp, and African classical music in Gambia, uh, Senegal, Mali. So from very early age, I was traveling to Africa to pursue music. So I think this was very helpful in being versed in African music. So even though it was not Nigerian music and it was not Nigerian culture, there is some similarity between West African culture in general in terms culturally, culturally speaking. So it, was, it wasn't as alien as it might have been. Generally, Africa, 
or the travel or the journey from Africa always goes to the West, always goes to Europe. But there's very little dialogue between West African countries. So instruments like the Kora and all the traditions of, say, Senegal, Mali, Guinea, Gambia can be totally unknown here in Nigeria and same the other way around. The traditions here in Nigeria not be known in those parts, whereas Britain and Nigeria or France and Senegal have a direct connection. So in some ways that's been interesting because I would like to counter that in some way, in introducing other African traditions to other African countries. I think that's very important for the future. You should still know your own traditions and where you come from more than anyone else. You should know your traditions more than someone else so that you bring something to the international table, something that's particular to you. So when we're talking about Mozart or Beethoven, we can all share the conversation. But when they start to refer to things very specific to German culture, you can say, oh yeah, and we have this and this is our cut. So there's a real exchange, not just taking someone else's thing without being aware of who you are inside that mix. It's very important for me. It was important to me as growing up as well because I had to find, I had to create my own identity. I was born in Britain, Irish ancestry, African ancestry. I also grew up around a lot of people from the, from the Caribbean community and from other parts of the world. And quickly you have to, if you don't gain a sense of self, you will have no identity. You'll be lost because there's nothing there for you culturally in terms of an identity. You're not English, you're not Scottish, you're not fully Irish, you're not any of those things. So who are you? <clears throat> and you, at an early age, if you don't consider those things, you will quickly become lost, lost culturally. So that's why I'm aware of the importance of those issues. And it's, it's just as true here. If you're not aware of who you are and what you bring, you can e equally become lost. Thank you.